Hey everyone, a couple months ago I finished the 2019 Inktober challenge and now I'm coming back with 20 new ink drawing tips. I made one of these last year after the 2018 challenge and I have a whole bunch of new tips for you, so without further ado, here's 20 tips for ink drawing. These tips are going to be sort of in the order that I use them as I go through a drawing from sketch to finish, so if you want to take notes then they're roughly in the order that you might use them in. All right, my first tip, and probably the number one recommendation I have for anyone who's getting going with ink drawing, is to work out your sketch as much as possible before you start inking. I found that early on, the less decisions I had to make while I was inking, the better. I wanted to improve on the technical side of inking, the actual application of ink to the paper, so I decided to make all the artistic decisions ahead of time, down to working out the sketch pretty completely and making a tonal thumbnail that showed me exactly what shade of ink wash I wanted to put where. All right, tip number two is once you've got that sketch pretty figured out, use a light pad to transfer your sketch. You can buy one online for like 20 to $40, or you can even make your own if you have a glass table and a light. A light pad or a light box allows you to see your sketch through the paper so you can trace the line art without ever having to touch a pencil to your final piece of paper. I love this method because it allows me to sketch digitally, print out my sketch, and then ink it traditionally right away. I like sketching digitally when I want to try out a bunch of different ideas or use the liquify or transform tools to edit my sketches. Alright, tip number three is to use a variety of thick and thin lines when you're creating your line art. I use a lot of different pens to accomplish different line art effects. I use the super fine tip zebra brush pens for big, impactful, swooshy lines and important areas of the drawing like the outline of a character's face or their lash lines on their eyes. I use a couple different sizes of micron pens to do fine detail work and technical drawing. And then I try to use a combination of the two, a combination of the thick lines and the thin lines, as well as lines that go from thick to thin or thin to thick to lead the eye around the drawing and control the order that the viewer sees different elements of the composition. Creating these confident strokes that follow the sketch that you've laid out can be challenging, so tip number four is to practice tracing lines before moving on to your final drawing. I use a pencil to create a variety of big, fluid, energetic lines and then go over those sketches using the different pens. This creates muscle memory and a steady hand. This is a process that takes a lot of time and I'm far from perfect, but I notice that every time I do this exercise I get a little bit better. And a little mini tip, when I'm tracing really big lines that I want to feel fluid, I use a pulling motion. I pull with my entire arm, almost my entire body even, not just the wrist. This is a technique that also takes practice, but knowing how to do it really pays off. Number five, use a watercolor palette and eyedroppers to mix your ink washes. I control the amount of ink and water that I drop into each little dish and then I swatch out each shade and make a little key for myself. And if you think you might get confused, try putting your palette right onto a piece of paper and making the swatches right next to each dish. Uh, mini tip number one, use the exact same paper for your swatches as you're going to use for your final piece because different papers absorb ink differently. And mini tip two, wait 15 minutes or so after you finish swatching because your ink washes tend to dry a little bit lighter than when you put them down. Tip number six, use a paper that's 140 pounds or heavier if you plan to use ink washes. I'm a fan of the Arches Hot Press watercolor paper. I buy the pads of 9x12 paper whenever they go on sale for about $16, but there's lots of different brands. Hot Press and Cold Press are both good. A heavy paper doesn't buckle as much when you add water, and it's easier to create thinner line work with too. If you plan on sketching directly onto the paper that you're going to be using, then my tip number seven for you is to consider trying a watercolor block. These are glued around the edges and they help prevent the paper from buckling as much. When you're done painting, you just take a knife and unglue the sides. If you need to transfer the sketch, you can do what I do and tape the edges once the line art's finished. And if you want to get really fancy, you can stretch your paper, but I never do that for ink drawings. There's lots of tutorials on YouTube for stretching watercolor paper though if you want to try it. 
A uh, little mini tip for this, make sure you use painter's tape when taping your edges and pull the tape up slowly to avoid tears. Alright, getting into the meat of an ink drawing now, my tip number eight is to use all of the rendering methods available to you. Ink is such a diverse medium, there are so many different ways to create lush textures using different methods of ink application. For example, I can achieve a medium gray with a wash, with some scratchy dry brushing, with pointillism, with cross hatching, the list goes on. And what I love about that is that I can make two objects in a piece look totally separate from one another, even if they're similar in tone. Uh, tone meaning like the level of darkness, the shade. Uh, and I do this by varying the method of ink application. Jumping off that last point, tip number nine is to learn to make lots of different effects with dry brushing. Dry brushing is when you take a dry brush, you don't add any water to it, you dip it straight into pure ink, and then you apply that brush to the page. You can create different effects based on how much ink you leave on the brush, you can wipe a lot of it off for a light ink load or leave most of it on for a heavy ink load. The motions and pressure you create when applying the ink also impact the results. You can create lots of different textures this way. In this clip, I'm using a really light dry brush over a piece that already has washes applied to add a little bit of texture and variation to the tone and create a more realistic appearance of fur on this fox. I used dry brushing in this piece to make the plant textures, those grass textures on the undead plant creature. I used that same technique in this creature here and also on the fur on her jacket and for her hair. You can make lots of different hair textures with dry brushing. Like I did the hair with dry brushing here too with like lots of little round circles using a really light ink load. You can get a great effect. Another dry brushing technique, and my tip number 10, is to use a frayed old brush to create a scratchier dry brush texture. When I realize I've destroyed a brush by accident by leaving paint or glue to dry on it, I'm always pretty down about it, but since I started ink drawing in 2018, all of my destroyed brushes have a new home in my ink drawing toolkit. Frayed brushes are actually really fantastic for fur textures, grasses, feathers, rosy cheeks, Add ink to the brush, wipe most of it off, same as before, and you're good to go. Different types of bristles will create different textures, so you can start a little collection, but when they're frayed, they just add that little extra bit of randomness that looks really natural uh, in something like fur here. I used the same frayed old acrylic brush. It's a size zero acrylic brush that got absolutely destroyed by some glue. I used a lighter ink load for the belly area and a darker ink load for the back. But yeah, just one brush for this whole piece here. Tip number 11 is to leave a puddle of ink wash on the paper to create a dark rim effect. This is one of my favorite ink wash techniques. When a puddle of wash sits on the page, the pigment collects to the edge of the puddle and you get a really fun dark rimmed stain on the page, which can be used to create all different types of textures and patterns and feels really unique to kind of these like watery mediums like ink and watercolor. You can also let it dry halfway and then blend some of it out like I'm doing here for, uh, for other effects. You can use this to create all sorts of different textures. And here's how it looks like when it dries. You can see that sort of dark rim all around the edges with the lighter interior that is kind of unique to watercolor and ink and watery media like that. I used it here in this piece so that I could add a lot of interest and uh, the sense of additional volume to the cloth here while really just applying one flat ink wash. It creates more dimension. You can see here how it dried. I really like how this effect looks on things like clothing. So on the flip side of that, don't make a puddle if you want an even ink wash. If you want a really even ink wash, load the brush with the minimum amount of wash you need to fill the area and practice using a small amount of pressure and reloading the brush often to avoid puddles. And if this is challenging for you, then you can try filling in shapes uh, on a practice sheet of paper to try to get an even wash before moving on to your final line art. Another technique to mention, and my tip number 13, is to use wet on wet to make soft gradients. 
for something like warm rosy cheeks, wet on wet can be the best method to get a soft bleeding gradient. So you wet the area first with a thin layer of water, careful to only wet where the ink should bleed to, and then you lightly tap the ink wash where you want it and you let it bleed out on its own. All right, getting out of the pure technical side of things and moving into the artistic side of things, contrast is your best friend in an ink piece. That's my tip number 14. Try to concentrate the area of greatest contrast where you want the viewer to look first, AKA the focal point. Once you've figured out your focal point, design the rest of the piece to support that focal point, lead into it and never overpower it. In order to do this, I usually put my darkest dark right up against my lightest light in a detailed, impactful area of the piece. Then I neutralize the rest of the image moving outward. Continuing off of that, tip number 15, silhouette is your other best friend. And controlling these, these two elements really carefully is super, super important. Putting a light silhouette against a dark shape or vice versa is a really powerful way to clearly show the viewer what's happening in your piece without needing a ton of busy line work. Here in this piece, you can see how I use the dark to silhouette the boy's face. In this one, I use the dark to silhouette, silhouette the light puppy's face. And in this one, I am actually doing a dark silhouette on top of lighter backgrounds. Tip number 16, remember you can use white line over black shapes just like you use dark lines over light shapes. Don't be afraid to go to a very dark or even a pure black value. This is where ink shines. Use a white ink with a little brush to create line art over a black shape. My favorite brands are Deleter 2 white ink and Kuretake white ink and I'm using a size 0 faux sable brush. You can also use a white ink pen, such as a Signo Uniball white pen. If your style is more rendered and less graphic, try using a white rim light to render a dark form or a black form. All right, continuing with the white ink theme, my tip number 17 is to use a white ink for all your specular highlights. Trying to leave little areas white is a huge pain. Things like eye shine, metal highlights, and these stars here are really easy to create with white ink at the end. Here I'm using the Signo Uniball white pen to draw on all these little stars. It would have been way, way harder to try to leave that white than to just add it in at the end. Tip number 18 is lineless shapes will recede in space. This is something you can use to your advantage. Here in this piece, I've created three levels of distance and one drawing. The dog closest to us is in the full range of value with lots of dark darks and that brings it forward. The second dog and the person are in a limited lighter value range and they're set back by this smoky atmosphere. They're still fully lined though and that keeps them in the midground. The fire has no line art and as a result, it falls back in space and becomes a background element. Little tricks like this, especially when you plan them from the beginning, can really help a piece come together. Tip 19 is to make use of hard versus soft edges. As a continuation of the last point, fuzzier line art created with a brush or smudged while it's still wet will appear to blur. You can use this effect to set objects further or closer in space. The hard line art will appear to come into focus and will seem important next to the fuzzy edges. This is another method you can use to design your focal point and set back the rest of the drawing. Okay, we've gotten through 19 ink tips together. Your drawing is finished. The last thing that I want you to do at my step number 20 is when your ink drawing is complete, make a good digital record of it. If you can afford it, a scanner is a really valuable asset. The one I have was about $200. It's an Epson Perfection V600 photo scanner and it will last me for many years. But luckily you don't need a scanner to make a good copy of your art. If you have a digital camera, the best way that I've found to copy using a camera is a tripod and natural outdoor light. Um, and if you don't have a digital camera, just make the best use of your phone. Put your drawing on a flat surface by a bright window in nice morning light. Um, these photos that you're seeing now were all taken with a Samsung Galaxy S8 and natural window light. All right, I just finished editing that video. I'm feeling pretty happy with it. I feel like they're all things that I would have really liked to know sooner that would have like helped me move quicker, would have improved my speed and quality if I'd known them earlier on. 
So hopefully you enjoy the tips. Let me know in the comments if you implement them, how that goes for you. And uh, also feel free to leave your own tips in the comments. I'll definitely read them and like upvote ones you see that you like. I'll try to put another one of these videos together in the future. I'm always discovering new stuff with ink that I want to talk about just because it's such a versatile medium for like appearing so simple at a first glance. So yeah, subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys next time.